Okay, let's take a look at the filter media that uh, I chose to use in the mask. It um, I was trying to find something that would be plentiful and would you know be qualified to hopefully provide some level of filtration that, that's unknown here. And so um, this is the particular brand I chose was just what was available at my local uh, Menards. Uh, living in Illinois, uh, you might look at another um, uh, home builder supply in your own area. Uh, these are uh, cartridges that fit into a particular Honeywell unit. And I chose these for a couple of reasons. One is they're, they're already classified uh, as to what they can filter. Um, they're nice and thin so they can fit in the in the mask and actually I, I uh, re-engineered the mask in order to be able to take the filters as I uh, as I demonstrate in the other video involving uh, changing out the media um, and so uh, you can get quite a few segments of filter media out of this uh, one package here if you are wanting to source uh, the material on your own it's um, uh, it's a, uh, a a little bit of a uh, an effort to to remove the media carefully out of here, and um, I'm going to demonstrate how to do that here. Uh, now this filter actually comes with a a, um, a pre filter. To, it's essentially a charcoal pad, which is supposed to remove um, odors. Since this is a uh, designed to go into a an, uh, an air air filter for your home, a small tabletop air filter. So uh, trying to find something that was clean. Uh, and you're you're probably going to look at uh, other sources and um, possibly uh, try to uh, use a, a different media in the mask, and and you can. Uh, my concern was, uh, uh, you know, the effectiveness of the filtrate, and then uh, if you're using media in this mask that seals to your face, all of the air is going to be coming through that filter media, and you are going to end up uh, drawing you know, every breath through that. So. For instance, uh, if you were to use a, uh, this is basically a, a cosmetic cotton pad. It says it is uh, lintless, but um, if you uh, look at this material, when you breathe in, some of the lint might come off. And uh, the way I engineered the mask and use this material, you, you shouldn't have any material um, you know, that you're breathing in. It is all polypropylene, so I qualified it that way. There isn't any other type of fiber in here, so it's plastic, which is uh, one of the key characteristics for HEPA filters and how they work, especially uh, that type and also the N95, how they filter materials involves the plastic that they make it out of. But in order, in order to take this, uh, get this material, uh, I carefully trimmed um, using some scissors the, the charcoal media all the way around. And then I use a, a pair of tweezers and some careful management here, trying to, to dis, disengage the charcoal filter. And, and what they do is it looks like it's hot glue. And there is some areas here that the glue has been attached to the very front ridge of this uh, filter media. And it does, it does pull uh, tees apart pretty easily. And so if you, uh, in, in my case, I would be disassembling this entire thing. So I would probably go through and remove the entire charcoal filter pad, which you could do as well. But uh, instead of disturbing the filter entirely, if you're using this just to resupply your own need for this, then you could just simply free up a few rows of this, uh, of this filter media by separating it like this. Pulling it free on the side. Sometimes the little glue blob will be on these little side rails. Now, another reason I chose this filter when I was examining them, I was, I was searching for an, uh, a, a setup, the, the, the design of the filter, where there was essentially a, you know, a linear piece of material here that was you know, unglued or didn't have these rows. Some of these filters have many rows of glue that go through them, and then therefore, you know, you really can't use the part where the glue is down in between the filter folds. So um, this particular model happens to have quite a long span of filter media in between here. And in order to actually use this material, you are going to have to dissect this stuff out of here, which is what I've been doing. Um, and so <clears throat> in order to do that... Um, so freeing up some rows here. Then I would remove the, the side. So I just use a 
a sharp object, you could use a knife. I'm using just a an artist's knife here, a craft knife. And then free this side up here, like that. Okay. And I, I really sort of leave these side areas alone. Here's, here's the tricky part. This is, if you've got a nice thin pair of scissors like this, if you can get in here and as close as you can to the glue, slide these scissors down and snip the filter media away from the glue section as far down as you can, like that. Same thing on this side. This all the way down. Okay, might mess up that first fold, but I think that's probably going to be garbage anyway. Essentially, trying to just release the end of this. Release the end, and and you you know in your effort here, you might make a couple of mistakes in the first few folds. But if you're doing this on your own for your own uses, you're you're going to have a lot of material to work with. So if you're if you're a little rough on these first couple pieces, just work your way through and try to get to where you don't see. So you can see this. This is the HEPA filter media right here. And as it, as it teases apart, I would assume that that's probably not going to be effective anymore. So try not to injure the areas that are in between the glue because that's really where uh, what you're wanting to use in the mask. So we're going to snip these away. And then <clears throat> I turn it over like that. And just remove the the end hard hard end piece like this. Now there have been some other videos. There's a lot of videos out there these days with uh, people using these improvised masks, and some people are using uh, filter furnaces that have this wire mesh on the back of them, and it just ju it just involves so much disassembling of the filter itself and and. Personally, I feel it uh, starts to undermine the filter media it's, itself. I, I tried to find something where I really didn't have to pull at the, the filtrate itself. So this has been cut through, and I, I'll probably cut just another another one here out. Take a couple of rows out so I can show you how, like when you received the material with a mask, it was it was basically folded in to basically protect the the filter, HEPA, HEPA side of the filter. Okay, so let's get these trimmed all the way down. There we go. And here. Let me take out one more row so we can demonstrate this. Okay. As far down as you can go. As far down as you can go here. Try to get some nice clean cuts. Okay, and then if you turn it over, do a finishing cut here, like this. Separate it completely. So this should be free now. If it didn't completely cut all the way through, just finish it there. So these should be, this should come loose. Do the same thing on this side. Finishing cut here. here and here now the side that you're looking at right now the side that did not have the charcoal on it this this is the exit point of the filter the air comes in through the other side so this is the side that has almost like a backing to it it's got sort of like a rougher fibrous side to it and essentially i think it's there structurally to keep the filter from essentially collapsing when the air passes through it along with the glue. Okay, I think I got that cut well enough to demonstrate this. There we go. All right, so now you have a, a little collection here of these folded filter pleats. Push this up right here. There we go. And so, <clears throat> I'm going to turn it over so we can look at this again. Now, 
normally I would take this off. I, 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 I don't like the, the black fibers of this kind of falling into the filter. So I, would, I don't like to really turn it over into there, but that's all right for this demonstration. So I'm going to take all of these pleats and I'm going to go ahead and notice how the, the, um, the HEPA forms a V pleat in here. I, uh, I, you want to keep as many of these V pleated HEPA sections together. So I'm going to cut it. I'm choosing to cut it here because of the way I'm going to do the final cuts. In other words, I don't want to go one more pleat because then it's going to waste one section. In other words, try to capture as many complete V's of this pleated material as you can. When you do this, this is a bunch. <clears throat> you could do the entire filter, but that's quite a bit of work pulling that all apart. Okay, so now you would uh, you would carefully take and just cut this, and this would be considered one section of this filter material. And this is kind of how I prepped it to come, and they came with, uh, to your kit in this way. <clears throat> And then from here, you would take the same steps as uh, is instructed in the video on um, obtaining uh, or uh, re replacing the filter media. This particular filter itself, these glued rows seem to be a little closer together than they have been in, in other actual filters that I've uh, disassembled here. So even with careful cutting, <clears throat> you may not be able to get two full pieces. I've been able, in some cases, to get a little bit more on this side to fit a different mask. So, but in that case, um, you can just use the mouthpiece again, like this, to create your filter. <clears throat> and then you would just cut around this. And so for every pleat, you should have enough filter material, every pair of pleats like this, every little V-shaped section of HEPA side would provide you with one uh, replacement a piece and these masks have been going out with two pieces. So every two pleats, you would have, uh, every two Vs, you'd have one piece of, of, uh, of filter media. And then this, this kit, this box, has two of these filters in it. So that would be quite a bit of material so that you could um, source hopefully enough uh, for your mask throughout this time. Um, all right, uh, that's the end of the video. I think uh, that demonstrates uh, pretty much all aspects of this.